Hello, welcome to the Movie Menu. It's me, your girl, Agi, and we're watching Rest TV. Today is a beautiful afternoon. I have with me Mr. Matelja Roger Ngaviri. Ngaviri. He's a film director, he's a producer, he's a script writer, he's, a, he's so many things but I'm going to have to wait and he tells us exactly who he is in the film industry and what he does. Welcome with me. Roger, you're welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? Good. Long time. Yes, long time. <laughs> how have you been? Um, up and down. I know. What are you working on? Um, I'm finishing up a movie. I uh, shot last year, so that's what I've been hiding. Mm, no wonder. I can't have been seeing you on the scene so much. So tell us. Uh, when did you start uh, this whole thing? Did you start acting? Did you start by writing? Did you start by... What did, what, how did you get into the industry? Uh, well, I started by writing, and that was 2010. Mm. Yeah, I wrote a TV series, uh, Emotions, and then wrote a short film after that, and then feature films. Wow. And then I've been up and down trying to work on different projects. Nice. Mm. So, can you please tell us exactly some of these projects you've done? Okay. Personal projects or projects I've been on? Everything, your personal and the ones that you have featured on, like okay. maybe you, you are directing or you are aiding or whatever. Okay. Um, I started off in 2010. Mm -hmm. I wrote my first TV series mm -hmm. with a few friends. Uh, it was called Emotions. We shot the mm -hmm. pilot of it. Is it out? Is it no, no, no. Okay. We shot the pilot bit of it. Okay. And the channel we were putting it on mm -hmm. at that time didn't really work out so and I know first things of course they don't come out easy so <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know been there my dear so what did you do after that then I worked on my first short film mm. uh, the test with uh, Michael Wongle Jr. Mm. Uh, Jacobs mm. how did it yeah, is it out on CD yeah. or did it premiere or anything it premiered uh, I think it was I don't remember the exact date mm. it's April 2014. Mm -hmm. and it was a national theatre. Wow. It was the first time I had a movie screen, so it was I amazing. can imagine <laughs> the excitement and you yeah. know. So uh, after that, uh, did you do any other big projects? Yeah. Now your personal projects. Uh, personal projects, yes. I worked on two short films that I shot in three days, mm. uh, back to back. Talking of uh, three days back to back, yeah. as in, what does it take for one to do a good film? Is it about time? Is it about finances? As in, because the duration also matters. You find someone telling, okay, for example, Hollywood. Yeah. We hear they take years, six mm -hmm. months plus, and they are doing just one project. So, what happens? How can you do something in three days? Okay, first and foremost, film is about planning. Mm -hmm. You need to be organized before you say, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. So, you break down your script. First of all, of course, you have to have the script mm -hmm. with the story ready. Mm -hmm. And when I say three days, I mean I wrote the story today, shot tomorrow, edited, and the three days, no. Okay. I've taken about six months before. Oh, planning. planning. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So by the time you decided to shoot, it, everything was in place, you just had to. Yeah, I was doing this uh, side as I was doing a law course. Mm. So it was hectic. So you're a lawyer? Yeah, yeah I'm a lawyer. Wow. How do, how do you juggle the two as in a lawyer? As in those are two different um, things. Well, my heart is for film. Respective of any day in life, mm. anytime you come and say I want you on set, I'll be there. And that brings me to the next question: mm. Do you do film for for the passion, that passion you feel, or do you do them for business? Um, both of them. Okay. Yeah. So. Mm. Okay. At first, when I started out, I was mm. doing it for passion. I so for the passion of it. I was doing it for passion, mm. and then um, later on, I started doing it for passion and money because at the end of the day you have to pay your bills. I know. Yeah, people will see an act on screen and say, wow, I'm not playing that person, but if the next day they find you looking rubbish, then they won't admire you anymore in your movies. Mm. And the fact that you don't have a good scale of knowing how much you have to pay a creative is task. Even Hollywood, I mm. think, depends on an individual how they negotiate, but it's not like a banker who knows at the end of the month I take this home as well about your commitment, your mm. passion, and your desire. I understand. So, uh, can you please tell us more about the projects you've done, your personal projects, either the ones you've directed, the ones you've produced, or the ones you've actually written? Okay. I wrote a feature film mm. uh, 
for some Tanzanian guy who's called a back and mm. it was called evidence mm. uh, to win some few awards wow. so this TV. evidence is the Tanzanian yeah by was shot in Uganda okay. it was a Tanzanian producer you're the one who wrote the story yeah wow and then after I wrote the test directed it and premiered it then mm. wrote funeral scene by ourselves by ourselves was starring Bob Wayne's kids mm. so mm. Wrote it, directed it, and then I had to go to Egypt to work on two short films. I'm talking to a big person. <laughs> no, I'm not a big yes, person. Yes, you are. Because no one you, knows me. If you can go to write in Egypt, then that's big. What did you write? What did you do in Egypt? I did. Uh, one was Ma in mm. 2017. It won awards. I think it won I awards was in around 15 festivals around the globe. Nice. Give me some money. <laughs> I'm sure you, I understand when you when your movie is screening in those uh, or those festivals you get money right yeah so you made good money with Maha. I made good money with Maha. Mm. and sorry I had to reinvest it so I put oh. it into a feature film okay which this is feature a film is production okay uh, it's called in Siwe. what's in Siwe? Uh, it stands for nobody said it was easy but being fancy we had to say in Siwe so mm. that we draw people in trying I to I know everyone's gonna put in Siwe. So in Siwe, what's the story about in Siwe? Or oh, do you want to do you want to talk about it? Or since it's still it's still in post production to okay. come out. Uh, I'm not the person doing the PR. For mm. it, so okay, no, I understand. I feel like I'm like taking you're taking a job. True, true. Yeah. I would feel the same. Exactly. So Roger, tell us more about the industry generally, the Ugandan film industry. Mm. What's up? What's happening? What? Why? Why can't we outgrow certain things? Why are we still under covers and under there? We're not considered out there. I don't know what are we not doing right okay i take it one to professionalism mm. i'm sorry to any filmmaker watching this right now but mm -hmm. it's good because we need to know these things so that we don't make the same mistakes over and over again and how to grow certain mistakes and you know make it better a few filmmakers mm. are professional enough to mm. admit when and how to do a certain project it's not about the money, it's mm. not about scheduling, it's not about the actors, the crew, mm. but it's about being professional enough. If you come to say that you're supposed to do a specific role, mm. you have to make sure you deliver 100%, irrespective of where you're being paid or you're not being paid, mm. or you're doing it because it's your project or it's because of it's a friend's project, mm. you have to be professional 100%. So you find sometimes people are juggling in this and that because they don't understand how it is to work as a, a professional. Person, a professional. Mm. Lucky for me, I started out being on crew mm. an international project, Queen mm. uh, of Catway, mm -hmm. and I got to see how these people run their jobs. So the same way a banker goes to the bank and knows he's on the job, mm. the same way a filmmaker should be when they're on set. But it's not the case? Um, we tend to laugh because I've called my friend around, like maybe I can say, let's go around this. People this is what I think tired. happens. I think I think what happens is when you write a story mm -hmm. in your mind, do you already have someone? As in your vision, your vision as in when you envisioned this story, did you already know in mind that you're going to use Agi? Or it's just something you just write and then at the end of the day you have to call your cousin, then you have to call your friend, the one you went to school with, even if they actually cannot deliver. Um Personally, because I write, mm. uh, there are roles you write and mm. you get a sketch image of somebody who may fit a particular role and those are the people you look for at the mm. end of the day. And then there are some roles you write and if a person can prove themselves that they are talented enough to mm. be the role, then they find themselves doing the roles. Otherwise, that's why you see sometimes they write a script for a particular person and then they turn it down and then you have to re-audition somebody else. Yeah. So it depends on what vision the writer had as they were creating the story. Uh, we're going to go for a short break and we'll be right back. Do not move. We're still going to come back with Roger and he's going to tell us more about film in Uganda, filmmaking in Uganda. Do not go away. Thank you for watching.
تسمع كلمة مدينة؟ ما الذي يأتي في ذهنك؟ الأقصى مدينة جنوبية سياحية جميلة ومن معالم الأقصى الشهيرة قصر ياسا باشا والذي يحمل الكثير من الغاز والغموض حيث حدثت فيه جريمة من أبرز الجرائم التي حدثت في تاريخ المدينة ومعنى الروائي أدهم العبودي أقصر الأصل يحدثنا أكثر عن بنات ياسيا باشا وقصره والجريمة والغموض حول هذه الجريمة أنا هبدأ الحكاية من من أندروس باشا اللي هو أبو ياسا أندروس كان قنصل كان قنصل يعني قبل قبل أن 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 يكون هناك مفهوم السفير كان قنصل في الأقصر فأندروس أنشأ العائلة وخلف ابنيه توفيق اندراوس وياسا اندراوس باشا بخصوص الجريمه اللي حصلت للبنات في القصر قصر ياسا باشا المقل على النيل في مفاهيم خاطئه اولا البنات مش بنات ياسا باشا البنات بنات توفيق تمام وكانوا بنتين كبار في السن تمام هو كان مع اليوم اخ توفي اسمه جميل تقريبا تمام البنات دخل حرامي يقال ان هو حرامي ولان القصر كان فيه املاك كتير او اثار كتير قطع تحف اثريه كتير انما الحرامي ما سلكش شيء يعني الحرامي دخل قتلهم وخرج انما استطاعت الشرطه طبعا ان هي تتوصل للجاني وتجيبه ويتحاكم يعني تمام انما في اقاويل كتير حول المساله دي هل هم ماتوا حرامي موتهم فعلا ولا مين الـ 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 كان المتسبب في انه يحرض على هذه الجريمه حاجات مش مفهومه القضية حتى في المحكمة مش مفهومة، الأقوال متضاربة، الشهود متضاربين، أقاويل كتير، حكايات كتير، ألغاز كتير، غموض كتير في المسألة دي، تمام؟ لما لما حصلت حملات التطهير من من الثورة ونزل نزل صورة ياسا باشا في الجرايد وفي حملات تطهير ضد الإقطاع وتم الاستحواذ على على قصر ياسا اندراوس باشا تمام قال مقولة قال اتمنى ان انا احضر جنازه جمال عبد الناصر يعني يشوف جمال عبد الناصر قبل ما يموت يعني يموت جمال قبل ما هو يموت وبالفعل يشاء القدر ودي من 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 المفارقات القدريه ان يموت جمال عبد الناصر بالفعل ويحضر جنازته ياسا اندراوس وبعد اشهر قليله يموت ياسا اندراوس عائله اندراوس باشا اللي كان بتشارك ب ب في الحراك السياسي هي عائلة إقطاعية ما نقدرش نجزم بده لكن It was his birthday from his wife changed everything. His love for Kathy put him against the wall. John Hatter! Please, I'm begging you, please! To pass the test. What is this test? This 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 test you talk about? What, what is this? Tough decisions to make. What do you want?
Hello, you're still with your girl Agi, and this is the Movie Manu on Rest TV. We still have our gentleman here, the filmmaker, the director, the so many things. He's going to tell us more about filmmaking in Uganda. Welcome back, Roger. Thank you. Okay, before you write a story, yeah. do you like, I don't know how to put it, do you, you can be walking and then you're inspired by something and then you start writing there and then, or do you first watch a movie, let's say a Hollywood or Nigerian movie, and then you look at that story and then you twist it and then you make it your own and then when I'm watching, I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just, <a, laughs> how did you do it? Um, what inspires you? Okay, I think inspiration comes from two forms. Mm. Um, one, nature. Okay. The nature around us, man is surrounded by nature. Mm. And then two, your inner self. Uh, there are some stories that touch you and you feel I have to make it into a movie. Mm. Uh, for I can see where uh, there's a story about a distant relative that I decided to make into a movie. Mm. And then the other stories, you walk around the street, you see something, you can see someone doing something and then you mm. pick a story. Mm. Or you're walking down the street, an idea comes to your mind and while well, you develop it. And personally, I use about three forms of writing. Mm. One, I have to first write it in my head. Okay. If it doesn't make sense to me in my head, then there's no use to put it on paper because I know it won't make sense. So you must do a lot of thinking. Yeah. You must use your head a lot because I'm just imagining if you're going to have to write everything in your head before you actually put it down on paper. I think sometimes people think I'm crazy, like I'm walking down the street and I'm talking to myself because I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because life. that's what we've been told when we're growing up, that mm. when you see someone on the street talking to themselves, they're actually mad. No, Run for your life. Sometimes I'm writing, I can maybe stand if I see, go envision this scene on mm. a bus stop. Mm. I'll go to the bus stop and mm. then try to think about what's going to happen in the story, what are these characters talking about, why are they stranded at the bus stop, stuff like that. Mm. So most of the times I put in my earphones, sit around, someone thinks either hey, listening to music or talking to somebody on the phone. So you sit down, think about the scene, reconstruct it. By the time you write it down, you know everything. Wow. And then from there, I go to giving my first draft to people and see what they think about it. And meanwhile, as they correct or make changes to it, I go back to it as well. Mm. So if I see something that they didn't see, I sometimes think either they didn't read it or maybe they missed it. Mm. Or if I see notes that I'm seeing also here, then I know at least we're working it out. Okay. Mm. Mm, okay, so doesn't it affect your, your thinking as in for you to have thought and written and then you bring it to me? Will I, will I you know, like like it's your baby yeah can i have the same feeling as you good stories are supposed to touch anyone um, that's why you watch a movie and people cry yes. or watch a movie and laugh if it's a good story then everyone must connect with it okay so with uh, with all this writing and movie making and where do you see yourself in the next five years considering what is happening in the industry right now um, well, I'm excited for my, my first feature film coming out. I've okay. done short films and traveled here and there. Um, I can't wait to see my feature film out there because I think it's the first of the many. Um, mm. So I'm going to stick around, I'm going to make as many stories as I can. I don't care about how far they go as long as somebody watches it and loves it and understands it. Thank you so much, Roger. We wish you all the best. Thank and you. we can't wait for all of these projects coming up. Thank we you can't wait much. for that premiere. Thank you. All right. I guess I'll see you in the premiere day. Oh, sure, of course. I'll just have to look for my dress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then hit the red carpet. Today is very, I can't even, I don't know how to introduce this gentleman. I'm just going to let him introduce himself to you and to us. Please help me welcome Mr. Robert Nyanzi. You're welcome. Thank you, madam. Uh, so who's, who's Robert Nyanzi? Yeah, Robert Nyanzi is a creative producer. That is, uh, he's a producer, writer, and director, but also someone involved in the entire process of filmmaking. 
mm. which includes financing and distribution planning. So filmmaking is a cycle. Mm. And if you're a creative producer, you do almost a lot, but you specialize. But I specialize in production. I'm more of a producer mm. than, uh, than a director. Wow. So in case, I, in case I have a movie, I have a story, a good story, I'll bring it to you and then you'll just uh, tell me exactly what to do and then you'll just give me the finances. What happens exactly? Uh, of course, you've asked a very great question. Mm -hmm. The financing bit is the biggest bubble to bust, just like mm -hmm. the distribution element. Mm -hmm. So with financing, it's not that I have money, mm -hmm. but as a producer, if I decide to take a new story and mm -hmm. it's really interesting, I'll uh, <coughs> definitely decide to know how to get the money to make, to make your film, mm. all the resources. So the first thing I, we'd have to do is to budget the story, then make a financing plan. Okay. Where do you hope to get the money to make the film? That is, to get the film financing. Mm. Mm. That is very okay, important. Okay, just help me before we go any further. Mm -hmm. What does a producer do exactly? Because what I understand, maybe and many other people out there, mm -hmm. we think, me, I just come and then you give me all the money that I need. Okay. Do you the, are you the one that does the budgeting or what exactly does the producer do? The producer takes the administrative responsibility of a film, okay. which includes financing, it's like a home. Mm -hmm. The producer is like the dad of the film mm -hmm. and the mother is like, and the director is like the mother. The director makes sure everything is spiced well. Mm -hmm. The producer has to help the director get what is needed to make the film and the entire team, he puts together the financing, he puts together the organization, he puts together the crew, and he hires most of the people who oh. are there. So even if you're a director or writer, you have to assign the rights to produce the film to the producer. Okay. So that's what most people don't do in Uganda. They say he's a producer, he's a writer, and they start working, but they don't, they don't define the line. But of course there are people who are producer, writers, and he does the whole process, he directs, he writes, and does everything. It depends on the scenario you have, mm -hmm. the partners you have. At times you do it yourself, mm -hmm. but in a more ideal situation, it is specialized. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, have you done any, as in, I know, I know you do films as well, other mm -hmm. than producing a bit, you yes. have done films. Exactly. So, what films have you done so far? Uh, as a director, I've done three films, two shorts. Do you write as well? Yes, I'm a writer. Okay. And uh, I've, I've so far done three films. Mm -hmm. I did Kai the Vendor, mm. which was a short film. Okay. Uh, it it, it, it uh, went around many festivals and won a few awards here. What, what did you say it was called? Kai the Vendor. Kai the Vendor? Yes. Kai, Kai as in the person, then the vendor? Yes. What was it about? It was about a ghetto boy struggling to make it in, to make it in life with mm -hmm. his mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a film that won the first Cub Award in 2016 in Burundi. Wow. And, wow. Uh, of course, I didn't know, mm. and it's UCC who came back with the award. with the award and called me. So it was like these stories over here. He couldn't make it, but he won the award, and then they bring him the award. I didn't. In fact, I didn't know. I, I had uh, given my film to Maisha, and they submitted mm. it. Mm. I'm at home doing some things, writing, and I receive a phone call from UCC. Mm. Congratulations! I say, okay, congratulations about what? Mm. Uh, you won an award in Burundi and please come back. So it was like the awarding ceremony was at UCC. And oh, so, was, wow. yeah. so what other movies have you done? Uh, still as a director, I've worked on uh, a ghetto film called uh, This Keto and Benson. Yeah? This Keto and Benson. The Keto, the Keto and the Keto Benson. And the Benson. Okay. And it's a love story based in a ghetto, mm. whereby it's, it's, it's like a, a creative metaphor whereby you, you have codes. Mm. The Keto stands for something and the pencil mm. stands for something. It's not like the, 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 the root sense of the word. Exactly. Okay. They are the objects that we see, but they are the objects that people are fighting for. Mm. But still, it's not, it's not what is the real thing. It's love. It's a love story. Okay. Yes, and we shot it around the gate and it's a very nice film. Did, are you the one that did Border Borders? Uh, Border with, Border Thieves? With Border, Border Thieves, I was one of the producers. Oh, you it was produced. It was a big international project that was financed through an international system, mm. a festival system, and uh, it received several funds. The lead producer was from South Africa. Wow. And it was a collaboration between Uganda, Kenya, Germany, and USA. And what does that mean in terms of co-production? Mm. When, when I talk about those countries, resources were raised from those various countries to, oh. to make the film happen. 
but it was a Ugandan story. Wow. Yes. I'm going to be part of that. Or you only wanted that. I, I think you are still a bit of that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so it was pro it, it was the development what started in uh, 1999, mm. 2009. Wow. The development started in 2009, mm. then it was shot in 2012 and released in 2015 in Berlin. I think it's among the few Ghanaian festivals that have, Ugandan films that have been at an A festival like mm. Berlin. So. Mm. Wow, it must have been a good project. Mm. So as, as, as a producer in Uganda, mm. what do you think about the industry? As, as in what, what are we not doing right? How come we're not growing? As in, you find someone like you, you, you you're well versed concerning films, you've been around, you've been to festivals, you've been to different industries. Like for example, I'm sure you've been to Nigeria, or Ghana, or Kenya. No, I've not been to Nigeria, but I've been mainly to, I've been to various countries, but in mm. Africa. Mm. I've been mainly to Egypt. I'm sure you've been to Egypt, yeah. Yes, South Africa and Nigeria. Yeah, so no, so no, I've not traveled a lot around Africa. No, but I, I mean, don't you see there's a difference? What are we not doing right as you I, I think I think what we are not doing right is failing to master the art of collaboration. Can you please explain? The art of collaboration is knowing how you raise resources for a film. Mm. Generally, knowing the, the cycle and who is involved in what, who has to do what. That is very important. Because people have roles, mm. and you must know the strength of someone. Yeah, but what? How can we have? Don't we need to have places put up like you know that? Okay, for example, National Theatre. I'm mm. sure if you went to National Theatre, you know, oh, Bob Badawa is the producer, all the other. But is is it enough? I think there's something that should be done that we're not doing. That's mm. what I think. Yeah, when I talk about collaboration, mm. is mm. resources. Where do you get the resources from? Mm. You should know when we should know who to get the resources from, who to help you get the resources. For example, with Boda Boda Thieves, mm. you had to first of all get a co producer from that specific country and have him as a partner, mm. get a producer from, from Kenya, get a producer from Germany, get a producer from all those countries and sign proper agreements before you even get the money. So that's the first risk you take what mm. you're giving them, whether it is territory or ownership on a project. Mm. So you do such specific things to get, the, to get that done. Mm. Then after, those specific producers help you apply for money from their governments. So if, you, if you're making, what usually international standard, a low budget film is around $300,000, which is around almost a billion Ugandan shillings. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, to raise that money, is really a hassle to raise three hundred thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand, I know, yes, but I, I, I mean, what I mean, as in even raising thirty thousand. Even, yeah. even raising ten thousand. I know exactly. Yes, and uh, how have we done it? You have to master the paperwork that is needed. You have to put in nights or sleepless nights to know that you get that money, and I think that's where we are going wrong. Mm. People forget to apply for funding. People are lazy about doing paperwork. That is the first thing. I don't know if I'm getting you right, but uh, are you saying that there are actually chances of people getting funded? Exactly. Let me say this. Mm. The first thing to do when producing a project mm. is packaging it. Yes. I've had many young directors come to me and writers with a script, mm. which is usually a script of a feature film is between 80 pages and 120 mm. per se. Mm. And he, he, he expects a producer, because I, if, if I receive 10 scripts in a month, I can't read all of them. But you have to package your project before you even do the script. You must have things like a log line, synopsis, various documents, around 20 documents, a budget, mm. You, everything that you need for the film. Even when you do not have actually the funds. Yes, there and yes, just have to yes. Have when you have an idea and put it, write it out. Mm. There are production documents and creative documents. And those are the documents that give the people who are supposed to give you money your vision. They understand your story. They, they, they don't they, actually need to look at the script in itself. Exactly. You should know how to package projects. I think I'm among the only few Ugandans who have got money from a competitive fund, which is called the Hubert Bowles Fund in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And I, it took me four months to package a project to 
sent sent to Hubert Bose fund. And you actually got the funds. Uh, that year I was the one uh, the only person giving funds from Africa. Wow. You know? Is it like what happens exactly? Is it like people apply and Yes, you apply. It's an opening for yes. everyone. You're, so you should have a deadline list of funds because these people have deadlines. Mm. You have to prepare your project and know that the application for this World Cinema Fund is this date, Hubert Bose Fund is this date, and then you send your project there. But you won't just send a script. People don't read scripts. A script is so wordy for a person who is going to, it should be like an elevator pitch. When you're pitching, you come with just very small details about your project. Mm. And when someone asks, asks for more, then you can give him more. So you should have everything. And that's why people don't, people don't package projects. Guys, we need to learn about packaging because now this is actually new to me. I had no idea that when you when you want to do a movie, a project like that, you need to package it. You need to sit down. Don't rush with a script and and, and throw it in <laughs> in front of Bob, thinking, oh, the finances are coming right through. You need to sit down, think, talk to the people that have done it, get 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 information. In fact, when you talk about packaging, mm. that's the that's the money bit of. Or, or, or film mm. packaging is, tri is twice mm. packaging for development mm. and production mm. then packaging for distribution wow. there's packaging before you make a film you package all those documents you take research pictures you yes. write various you make character bibles you yes. make budgets mm. you you make your tentative cast list and mm. crew list and have them take photographs interview them you can even do video packaging and is have... Is this after you've actually done the casting? No, 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 this, no, is, just no, no. this is still in development. Okay. You, you have an idea, then you start putting it on paper. Okay, okay. So the next step is when you finish making a film. Many people have made wonderful films, but they yes. can't take, the, take, take, take a film anywhere. Why? It's because someone will think that the video is enough. He has made a film and he's, he's going to get money. Mm. But that person will need something called a press pack, for example, or an e electronic press what, kit. What, what is a press pack? A press pack or electronic press pack is, mm. a, is, is a document that has details about a film. How did you make it? What's the story about? What's the history? What challenges did you face? What are your hopes? Who is involved? Mm. Mm. You know? Before you face all these politics, you have to package a project, the trailers. Then you master a film. But this is after after the movie is done. After after you finished making the film, mm. then there's, a, there's another process. Everything that involves money in film has to be has to be done with a lot of paperwork, a lot of communication, back and forth emails, texts, phone calls, because you know people buy films according to territory. And we have a chance in Uganda that you can use little money to make a film like maybe... Yeah, because we have beautiful sceneries. Yes. We have beautiful places. Virgin, I, I, I would like to use such a word mm -hmm. because there are so many good places in Uganda that are not anywhere in the world. And, and we are seated here. Exactly. And we don't know exactly what to do to make all this work. Mm. So as you, as, as, a, as a producer, know that what are the challenges? Other than all this is put together, you've done all this, but there are still those challenges. What challenges you? I think the biggest challenge is having a very small pool of money mm. for many filmmakers. You know, those funds we apply for, they mm. are funds called films from the South, for example. You know what the South is? Mm -mm. The Southern Hemisphere mm -mm. Of, of, of the world, where you have, you, when, you're, when you're making a film for financing or distribution, mm. you're competing with people from Brazil, people from South America, because mm. they're taken as in, yeah, in the same South category mm. as Africans, those development, developing countries. Mm. So uh, South Americans are very intelligent people and they're very hardworking. Mm. So you're competing with them, you're competing from, with people from Asia, the Philippines, people mm. from Nepal. So you have to be very organized in the way you do your things. And you know that there's competition, you know? Because, for example, they will receive like 500 applications and they are giving only six projects. So you should be very lucky. And I told you, you're competing with all those intelligent mm, people. Mm, mm. That is the first challenge. Wow. The second challenge is Uganda, for example. Mm, Uganda. There is no production. There is, we don't have a film commission. That's the first place. And uh, there are no, there's no framework for, for getting into funds. 
what, 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 what do I mean by that? You have to, you must have, you must have at least support from your home country. Mm -hmm. Which we do not have. Which we do not have. For example, if Uganda had a development fund and you're applying for production funding somewhere and you say, okay, I received $6,000 to develop my project from the Ugandan Film Fund, mm -hmm. then my finance plan is like this, I want production for this. So you, you, it's, it's a starting point. Someone fears to give you money when you don't have something to start with. You get? Mm -hmm. I feel you. Yes, because in fact, in, in fact, if you want someone to help you, even in real life, you will say, what do you have to start with? What do you have? You always want to know yeah, you what have, you have. You must have. have a starting point. So then the third thing is co-production treaties. What's that? Co-production treaties mm. are agreements between governments or film commissions mm. to, to help finance films, get rebates, get, things, get, get, get all stuff that is needed to make a film, but through a treaty. So there are, many times, there are many times, there's a time I was supposed to get around $50,000 $50, from Israel, mm. but Israel didn't have a co-production treaty with Uganda. Mm -hmm. And then this producer in Israel told me to get a can to get to, to apply through a country that has a co-production co-production -co treaty, treaty with Israel. Mm -hmm. So I had to sign a, an agreement with a producer maybe from Germany or France, and then that producer signs on my behalf with the Israeli producer. Wow. I, ended up going out. I can imagine, yeah. You get yeah, so it's, it's a long, it's a long yes, co-production treaties are very important. They build trust. So yeah. as the industry, what should we do to have those in place? I think the first thing we should have is an independent film commission, and that should be set up by government, I, I, I would say. And we have those treaties, because those treaties are the ones that help mm. us get funds. Do you think with the right people, with the right knowledge, now, like what you're saying right now, if you sat down with people that think like you, mm. you would sell this idea to the government or to the UCC or whoever is in charge or responsible for all this, do you think they would buy it and, yes. and put all this in place? Because at the end of the day, even the, that the person, the last person down, the mm. actor, for example, mm. is affected. Because I'm thinking, if all these things were in place, mm. then you can have these treaties signed and then you can have funds and then you can be able to actually pay these actors and actresses, because they think they're not paid right. Exactly. Mm. Uh, what I should say is filmmaking, especially the area of production, mm. is about sharing knowledge and experiences. That's very important. That is very important. So when you share knowledge and experiences with people, mm. then things will be done. So in that aspect, I'll be very willing to participate in the process of setting up these things but i am not an authority i'm no, also I, understand. I am also an independent filmmaker doing my doing my work doing your thing exactly but i would if, if called upon to participate in various things i would i would definitely be there to help because i'll share experiences i'm not the most experienced person there are people i know and i respect mm -hmm. here who mm -hmm. understand production but of course at least i would i would share what i have it's about sharing it's not about giving them knowledge because you find someone is knowledgeable but you just share what you have and also get something from that person i don't know about you people but me i'm learning a lot right now we're going to break for a commercial break just shortly i'll be right back with robert nyanzi and he's going to tell us more about because now the more i talk to him the more i understand there's a lot we do not know and we should know we need to educate ourselves we need to go out <clears throat> there we need to talk to the right people please we don't go anywhere we're coming back with robert nyanzi thank you Do not make friends, do me like how them do garnet white 
lights out when them planet. Evil people are shot from we planet. Friend them with no one a slip none a chronic. When me see our friend do to buju, don't yet me finna trust no for uno. No sell them friend for your cup of ice water. Show them no why you finna no sell out my friend them one day if them say the same. Or if them a free me show the world seven. Pichi ya tata oba jibye. Oko ze wo choro tajisanze wo. Hello, welcome back. I'm still your girl, Agi, and I'm moving money on Race TV. And I have the gentleman here with me. We're still with Robert Nyanzi. Welcome back. Thank you. So tell us more, because I don't know. I, I still think, because I want us in five years, ten years to come, to have all these things in place, but I don't know how can we have them done. So all these challenges, how can we, how can, how can we help people coming up? Because, for example, look at you. You are a producer, and... Uh, and we need people like you coming up. So what can we do? What should we do? I think first and foremost, mm. we should share. But we should also help the young, the, the young filmmakers and producers understand that film is not just an art, mm. but also a business. Yes. But also government should also understand that our stories should be told and sh it should set up frameworks and avenues for us to have that smooth running to make films and mm. to thrive as filmmakers. Like incentives, for example, filming in Kampala City is around 200,000 200, shillings a day. I think I hear it What do you mean exactly? Getting a permit from KCCA is around that amount. And if you're shooting... So I, I had if, no idea you actually need a permit to shoot around you need you, Yes, every city needs a permit. Every city you need to have a, a permit to shoot. Mm -hmm. But um, And you get this from cases? Yes, you pay around 200. I hear it, it's going to be raised to 500,000. Wow. And filmmakers don't have that money. <clears throat> but I think there would be incentives for Ugandan films. Mm -hmm. Ugandan films are... Ugandan stories made by Ugandans. Ugandans. I think the, you just how the city needs to know how a film promotes Kampala City, and then they give him a free permit or an incentive. But paying that money, filmmakers don't have that money. You get. No, I understand. Even renting equipment is hard. In itself. In yeah. itself, yes. That would. Be, that's the first. That's I think. The, I think that's, that, those are some of the things that are actually. Yes, they make things difficult. Like you, you have to hide to to, to take a good shot. Just getting a road close to get very nice footage mm. would be almost impossible unless you are well connected, I mm. should say. Mm. And, and, and that, is, that is a challenge. The other thing is uh, these young filmmakers should embrace learning. 
most people do film as a pastime. Okay, now just a pause on that. Mm -hmm. when, when you started out doing this, was it just for passion, you loved it, or did you see yourself actually building an empire out of filmmaking? I, I wanted to enjoy, I, I enjoyed film. Mm. I only do what I enjoy. I only do what I like. Mm. I only deal with the people I like. And starting out as a filmmaker, mm. is, uh, I started a project as a distributor where I did mobile cinema in schools. Mm -hmm. And this is how I developed that idea of, I, I, this is how I got connected with filmmakers. Mm. And I, I, I took time to learn a lot of the things. I yeah, started as a distributor, but of course I've done trainings in, mm. in, in various countries, Netherlands, South Africa, uh, France. But these have all helped me become better. But yeah. it wasn't that it was my... It, it, it was it was planned that you start the film and mm. then you do film. No, mm. for me it was about the passion that I had for film mm. and everything just came in place. Wow. Especially the knowledge and mm. of course you have it. You, you must get that opportunity. I got an opportunity to work with uh, very good producers on big projects. Mm. Yes. So it takes you a learning heart, like yeah. someone uh -huh. who really wants to learn. A learning is this heart, thing, yes. Is this thing of... Uh, me, I think I can act. I don't even need to go to a film school or what. There are people who think like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what, what do you advise people should go to film schools or the people that are actually talented and they just... I, I think the concept of film school is still new. I don't think it is even 12 years old. Mm -hmm. There were no structures for training people film. Mm -hmm. But it was about interest. There, 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 there are three major pillars mm -hmm. in filmmaking. Even if you're going to a film set, you must have the right intention, mm -hmm. you must have the right motivation, mm -hmm. you know, and you should be committed to do it. You should it. love to do this yes. thing. Don't because, just you know, it. filmmaking is very stressing and breaking. Even if even you're in a shoot, mm. you've shot 12 days, you have 30 days, but you see the whole crew is down and broken. The project is intense, but you must have that intention to do the film, to make the film, to push on and finish. So in cases like those, mm. what, what keeps you going? I think you need the right team. You only, you only work with someone who will believe in you. You need the right team. Never work with someone who doesn't believe in you in film. Because it's very challenging, it's full of challenges from every process. People you hear, there's nothing good that comes easy. These guys spend sleepless nights on, on sets. And like he said, people lose it, people break down, people get sick, so... And even if you're doing it as a hobby, mm. this is a very expensive hobby. <laughs> what do you, you mean know? exactly? If, if it's a hobby, it's a very expensive one. You know mm. why? Right. Like if you're a producer, there's no, you, usually on a low budget when you've squeezed everything and you have your own equipment and mm. you have your own crew, the least you spend on a film per day is a minimum of 500,000, I would say. You have to feed people, you have to rent, you have rent cars, hire crew. Just imagine, if it, if it rains and you've booked all those things, you've paid up front, you lose the 500,000. It's very expensive. I think this one That's brings us back to the other point yes. of, of planning. Yes, planning, but you should also know that film is a business. It's not a job. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not just a hobby. Me, I enjoy film, I'm passionate, I just want to act because there are many girls who do such things. Yes, okay, I know. you know, I, I can act, can I come for two hours and act? You commit for months, days to, to make a film and you find a producer, you, if you're an actor, you mm. come for two months, maybe you, you may have a month of mm. workshop and training, mm. those mm. casting calls and things like mm. that, but a producer has been on a project for over one year the writing, the signing of contracts, the traveling to pitch the project to make sure that he gets money. It's a process. And we have so many unprofessional actors and actresses. They get excited for the first one week because mm -hmm. you told them you're going to shoot for a week. Mm -hmm. And then it, 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 you know, it stretches into two yes, weeks. Never, month. Yeah, you should, have, you should have that allowance to, to, to be flexible. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not really... Okay, I, there's this thing that has actually been, I've been meaning to ask. I don't know what you look at when you're choosing your actors. What do you look at exactly? Other than, of course, people auditioning and you know I have this role and I think Agi can do it, come and audition and all that. What other things do you look at when choosing, choosing your cast? Mm, that's, a very, very, that's a very important question. Yes. When I'm looking at cast, mm. first and foremost, I want someone 
who, because I'm a realist, mm. I want someone who will fit into that role. Yes. You know? And that's why you see, I really deal with professional actors in the film. I can put, I can include around one or two, but I deal with raw talent. And Meaning people who have never acted. Yes, I, I want to work with non-actors because they give you a new dimension. You must have a good reason why you don't yes, want yeah, to work with. Yes, I, it's not that I don't have to work with professionals. Yeah. But first and foremost, professionals have already have a method they are doing things. Mm. But you remember, every film is unique to another. You, you must know what you need to get. And for me, it's very good to get what I want, the performance, the presence, and the look from raw talent. That's why you see, I don't, I, at times I don't even do casting calls because these people are already programmed to act. I don't want someone who is going to act. I want someone who is going to be that character and own it. Okay, uh, I know someone who told me that people, producers and filmmakers, they always want low talent because these guys are excited. They don't even know what they have. They don't even know how to, to ask, this is how much I need. Okay, no, no, no. Let, me, let, let, me, let me say this, let me say this. Yes. On all our films, I come from a collective called Yes, That's Us. Yes. Our actors have won awards mm. from established actors. Mm. What does that mean? We have put in work. We have had our work appreciated by the actors. Mm. We've taken actors through workshops and we've mm. given people careers. Okay. Yes. Now, if I used only experienced actors, when will a new a new person no, be No, you're right. I just said that because I know someone mm. who doesn't like using established people, like for example, actors, professionals. No, you need. You, let me give you. Let me tell you something. Okay. You need to blend. Blending is the word. Yes. Yes. You need to blend. You 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 have experienced actors and non-actors who are who you are introducing to the industry. So what happens is, especially in terms of performance, mm. you have this actor, this, this, this non-actor, mm. picking off a performance from an experienced actor. Then you have this experienced actor turning down to, to, the, to, yes, to, the to, to, to the level of that actor, and you get something natural from both of them. Yeah, because I've been, I've been concerned and I've been asking myself questions about having the same faces over and over again in different movies. <laughs> you, know, you know what is very funny? Yeah. You, you will find someone who acts an, like an Ascari in every movie, like a lawyer in every movie. Yes, What's why? Yeah. You know? why, why? Why is that? Because that, that brings me back to that same question. You find someone who has acted, because people do not want to, I don't know, I don't, I don't know I, the right I, I, word. I, I love raw talent. Yeah, because and then, at times raw talent is more expensive than... than, than, than uh, because you invest a lot of time. No, 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 no. Why? What if, you are, if, if someone is a professional actor, mm. he will know the challenges and he will know the rate. Mm. And if you're budgeting, you budget a rate, may say if it's 100 or mm. 200 or 50,000, maybe, or 500,000 a day, mm. you give that person that money. But a, a person who is, who is uh, raw talent, mm. you go and find that person, he's doing his work, you tell him, no, I like your face. I like your tonation because you hear you 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 you, you base on various factors mm. to select someone to act in your film. So you you like a bank officer and you find someone who is busy, and he will tell you, "I want a million per day." But because you want that raw talent, that natural element from that person, you will pay it. I've had I have had situations where I'm paying raw talent more than than the, than the yes. Okay. It's like working with a child. When, when you get a child, you have almost three people on set. You have the person taking care of the, of the child, you have maybe the parent, and then the child himself. That becomes expensive, you have to transport both of them, you have to give that person a little bit more money because that payment caters for all these other people. But you want that? The, yeah, that, that yes. individuality. Yes, you want that little difference. Mm. So now, what would, how would you advise, what would you tell this upcoming filmmaker, actor, anyone that wants to be in the industry, what would be the advice, mm. the honest advice, what should we do, what should I do, what, someone who's out there watching, and if they love what you do, they've probably watched your work or maybe other things, and they think it's this easy, but mm. you know, between me and you, we know. Yeah, we know. So how would you advise? First and foremost, film is an art. And secondly, 
it's a business. You should both both things need need a lot of passion to get. So you you you'll I would give two suggestions. There are many, mm. but persist. Don't give up. Don't give up. Please do not give up. If you enter the film industry, make an intention that I am there to stay. Mm. This film industry is going to take me where I want to be. This film industry is going to provide for me. This film industry is going to feed me. It doesn't matter if you don't get a role today or tomorrow, you go and audition. Keep on auditioning, keep on auditioning. Don't just give up. Mm. Keep on auditioning, going to all those casting calls and go and, and you know, you never know. In other words, do not give up. So, your last words. My last words. Mm. Always put God first. Then the rest will be easy. Now that was the, that's the key word. That's the key thing that we should all do in whatever yeah. we do. Hold God first. That's my last word about the advice I give because when you wake up, mm. God decides. Yeah, sure. You do the work. God decides where you go or where you take, where, where something takes you. You should you should believe in yourself. You should believe in your story. I think before anyone you should else believe in your in ability. You. Yes. Yes. Before anybody else believes in you, you should motivate yourself before anybody motivates you. Yeah, because it will take them forever to believe in you. So in meaning you have to do something. You must have for a them. lot of success. Yeah, for them to, to be. believe in you. But you must love what you're doing and trust God. I say, put God first. Trust him. Let him do his work and you also do your part. Thank you so much. It's been yeah. awesome talking to you. Yeah. I, I just I don't want to stop, but we have to go. Because, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of, you have to go back to say it and all that. Thank you so much for your time. And I know I, I, I just can't thank you enough. Ah, thank no, 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 no. We are here to so. share. That's yes. the person, like I said in, yes. like I said in, early, in the earlier mm. conversation, mm. we are here to share. Thank you so much. It's been nice. You're welcome. I can't wait to talk to you again. I'm always available. I'll call and you when I'm releasing the films, maybe. Yeah, and then I'll come and present. You, 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 know, you know, like, like <laughs> you said, people enjoy the success. Yes. Yes, I'll we'll call come you when, when, when the project is successful. When everything is out there and yes. you're on the red carpet and, you know. When I've bought a new suit and I'm not putting on the Yes, sure. Part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And uh, I hope to talk to you very soon because I need more of this. I don't know about you guys, but I need to learn more about filmmaking. Not necessarily about filmmaking in Uganda, but generally. Because there's a, a lot. It's a, it's a long process. Yes, it is. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good time. Thank you so much for watching the manual. And it's been your girl, Aggie. I don't know what to say. I can't even add anything on this, but it's been awesome. This gentleman is knowledgeable and we need all this. We need this ourselves because we need to learn. We need to understand what we do. We need to enjoy. We need to talk to the right people, do the right things, packaging. Thank you so much for watching Rest TV. I can't wait to talk to you again. It's been your girl again. Until next week, watch Rest TV, the movie manual.